I think it's important to note that when we talk about film genres, the first film genre was Western films. But when we talk about film history, history, the most popular era that has been depicted in film has been the slave era. In Western, Civil War era. Um, Gone with the Wind, Birth of a Nation. The era of slavery has been shown more, that era has been shown more than any other era. Why? And the reason why is because through film, filmmakers have a way of rewriting history. And if it didn't go the way they wanted, wanted it to go, by presenting it in a whitewashed way, they can show the South didn't lose. The South wasn't defeated. The South shall rise again. And so we have these slave films that continually get depicted and, and presented. Some American films that have dealt with slavery are films like So Red the Rose. So Red the Rose is, is something that, uh, a film that hasn't been shown much. It has a the typical happy darky, loyal plantation slave. I want you folks to guard and protect this plantation. I've never been a bad master to you, and you've never been bad slaves. What will happen to you, what will happen to all of us, depends upon the wisdom of Almighty God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Miss Sally will be your mistress. Yes, sir. My son Middleton will be your master. Yes, sir. But there's an attempt at a slave rebellion. That's rare. But how that stopped is interesting. Boxes of Harrow. If you don't like any of the film, because it was nothing like the book. The book was very popular and it was written by a black man. But a lot of what was in the book never translated to the screen. But if anything, I would recommend viewing it for Suzette Harbin's role as Belle. She was magnificent and she showed she would rather die than live as a slave. Bill. Him man child, him warrior, him die, but him no slave never. Bill. Caribbean, um, around 52, 1952. What happened is a number of films came out dealing with um, slave uprisings because during the 50s you had uh, African uprisings against colonialism erupting. And so a way of touching on that because it was topical, you had a number of films released where you had slave uprisings, but it never dealt with slave uprisings here in America. Caribbean, the Caribbean, and um, Woody Strode has a, a strong part in that film. Of course you have um, the role of the validating white person in that, but Caribbean is an interesting film where it shows blacks fighting against their slave masters. Good time to kill. Not yet. Kill now, no sale. Quashie is right. We're not ready to kill evil one yet. I will give you the signal at the right time. When the boats come, then we'll have a way to escape. The young one has given his word that the big sea of men will drink, eat, grow callous, 
Sleepy. Then we'll strike and leave here forever. Uh, one of my favorite films, slave films, is Lydia Bailey because I was so impressed with the character of King Dick portrayed by a magnificent, stalwart William Marshall. He had the stature and the voice. And um, this is a film a lot of people are not even aware of it existing. <laughs> Lydia Bailey, it's worth uh, getting that film. William Marshall's Outstanding. And it's about the revolt against Napoleon's France by Toussaint Louverture. Why aren't you coming with us, King Day? Thank you, Mademoiselle. No. He has work to do here. Better hurry. The tide is turning. I feel like I were running away. You're but one man. You heard what Toussaint said of one man. Besides, you also have things to do. When it's all over, come and see us. I may need your advice. You come back to us. We won't have much, but we'll have our freedom. Burn, Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando had a hand in the production of that, and it was his way of dress, addressing the issues the, uh, surrounding civil rights, the loss of Martin Luther King, and it was about instigating slave rebellion and how it backfired and the, the slaves became uncontrollable. Burn. Now, a measure of powder. Then the hemp. A measure of lead. Again, the hemp. Now. The rifle is ready. Uh, tip, typical TV fair, you know. Um, I wasn't impressed with Roots. It was it was nice. Oh, it was great. We it was, the ratings and whatnot. But it's it's the way America wants. There were some things it revealed that was tragic. But it's typically Hollywood coding, sugar coding. Or has there ever been a film that, uh, in your opinion, truly depicted uh, the true horrors of slavery? Yeah, a film I didn't like, and that's Goodbye Uncle Tom. I didn't like it because I felt it was exploitative in the sense that, see, a lot of times what filmmakers would do is they would exploit the black female body. So you had a lot of nudity in that, sexuality in that, which was a part of slavery with slave master having his way with black women. I don't, I don't like seeing that. And I felt th they went overboard in that. But the people who pre presented that film, they felt they were being true to what slavery was about. And in many ways, you did have the repulsive denigrating, devaluing images of slavery in that film. And it was so horrible that they attached what I call a cathartic figure in that they gave you a Nat Turner type at the end where he goes crazy and he's, you see him going after some white people. That was an added to give the black viewer some sense of relief after going, witnessing that film. 
because that film is similar to the the um, the spectatorship and the gaze that's involved for a black watching Twelve Years a Slave. <laughs> Drum I liked uh, because drum, as I said, more or less reflected the Nat Turner image, you know, where these blacks went crazy over their treatment and you had this revolt, something you really didn't get in motion pictures. And I reiter reiterate the reason why you didn't get them in motion pictures because cinema in this dominant culture is always about showing the happy darky, the, the black slave being okay with his condition, which was not historically correct. So drum, I, that's what I liked about drum. Drum, a story of love and lust. No white man can ever love you like I will. Savagery ah! and sensuality. Brutality and revenge. They take our men and turn them into good and faithful dogs, happy to eat a white man's leaving. They tell us what wenches to pleasure like horses. <laughs> they sell our children and we lick their hands. Drum. Quilombo. Quilombo is an important film. Um, I remember when that first came out, I had people just beat me over the head. Get Quilombo, get Quilombo. But it's interesting. It's about a. Uh, a colony of ex-slaves, and they're trying to, to maintain their, their freedom, and the film is important on how they fought against being enslaved again. Sankofa is um, Holly Garima's film. It's about a fashion model who is transported back to slavery, and its main theme is one must know one's past in order to move forward. That's a classic. Twelve Years a Slave is a, a powerful film, but it's something um, you got to really have your mind together to be able to sit through that. It's gut wrenching, but it was, um, you know, it wasn't the first time that story was told, but it was. It's powerful, gut wrenching, and once again, it's someone going through the experience of slavery, but we don't see anyone revolting against it. Django. Django is interesting. Uh, um, someone asked me, Django, Brother Woods, doesn't fit the mold. It doesn't fit the mold. Bullseye. Come on no, We got us a fight going on that's a good bit of fun. Coco, give me some sugar. So you really free? Yes. You mean you want to dress like that? And there's a reason why Django doesn't fit the mold. When you look at what films get made, it's usually if it's about um, a black character, we'll have a Jesse Owens that's coming up, Jackie Robinson, Joe Lewis story. Django is rare because it deals with a mythological figure, okay? And no, it doesn't fit the role because Django is a hero. He's doing something that's unheard of. But the way they can dismiss it is a lot of people 
even if they love it, what's the one thing they can say? It's not real. It's not real. That's fantasy. There's no guy like Django. That's Hollywood BS. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When they give us black characters, when they're going to do a black character, who did Selma, Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Joe Lewis, Jesse Owens, the Harlem Globetrotters, popular figures. But why these figures? We get these figures because, yes, they're popular, but they have what I call circumscribed historicity. Okay. Repeat that. Circumscri circumscribed historicity. In other words, we're dealing with people who actually lived, so we can't have them do fantastical things because it goes against what they actually did in real life. See, film, when we have the white heroes, John Wayne, John Wayne is playing a mythological figure. Uh, most of your, 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 your um, heroes are mythological. They're not real people, okay? So they can do anything. Hercules, Samson, Tarzan, Superman. They can be all of those things, see? But when we get the black character, it's someone, Malcolm X, who can be assassinated, Martin Luther King, who can be assassinated, Joe Lewis, who um, can finally be defeated in the ring and die a poor man, Jackie Robinson, who um, can die of diabetes from all the suffering he has had to take. And even when he uh, came in 47 to be a part of the Dodgers, they can tell him he can't fight back. Well, he says, I got two cheeks. Circumscribed, contained. They can be circumscribed and contained because these are real people. And you can only do so much with real people. Or if you change one iota from what people know they've done, well, what happened with Reagan and Selma? That didn't happen. See? That's the difference. So when we get Nat Turner that's coming up, I'll say, okay, when I mentioned we never had Nat Turner, the reason why I said we didn't have Nat Turner is because we didn't have the image of blacks fighting back. But when they give us Nat Turner, Nat Turner was killed. Not only that, I would direct any of the viewers to look up the reaction to William Styron's Nat Turner. We had a lot of people upset over how he presented Nat Turner as some crazy man. The same thing they did to John Brown. Said he was a crazy man, you see? That's, that's what goes on with the dominant culture and how they, the technology that's involved. We enjoyed it because it was an opportunity to see sexy black women, sexy black men, but overall, it was too much pimps, pushers, and prostitutes. You know, we have major companies putting their money behind this. And, and I'm happy about that on one, on one side of the coin. On the other side of the coin, I have a problem with it. Because from my experience, what I noticed is after it got more commercialized and after it grew and it grew and it grew, the heart and the soul and the culture left.